During World War II, Sergeant Ken Porwell, a tank driver from Minnesota, found himself fighting in the Philippines. After months of unrelenting combat and without much needed replacements and supplies from the U.S., his officers decided to avert a bloodbath by surrendering to Japanese forces. The POWs would become participants in an awful experience known as the Bataan Death March. It began on April 10, 1942. While the experience would push Ken to the brink of human endurance, he now sees that it was punctuated with moments of the divine. And one of our friends uh, 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 by the name of John Faulkner decided that he was too sick. He was just aching and sick and tired and he didn't want to fight the fight anymore. I just want to die, he says. And when we went to try to talk him out of that, he, he would have no, 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 wouldn't listen. No, I just want to die. I just, leave me alone. Just leave me alone. And so he's put into a, a zero ward. And so whatever you have is up for taking. And you end up naked, laying on split bamboo. And one of our guys said, John, you look so miserable. He says, I'm going to leave you my half a blanket. And he'd been carrying this thing around for some time already, several months, and it's full of stickers and brewers and, 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 and bloody lice and maybe even a bed bug or two, and John accepts the blanket. And four, or five, six days later, we haven't heard that John had died, so a couple of us go back to see what's going on, and, and there he sits with a blanket around him, and he says, oh, you feeling better, John? No, not really, he says, no. But he says, you know, that man gave me his most precious possession. He thought that much of me, that he gave me his most precious thing. And I says, wow, I better think better of myself. And I decided I want to live. I said, have you told the doctor about it? No, no, he had so we got hold of a doctor, and, and he convinced the doctor that he had changed his mind, he wants to live. So they moved him out of there to a place to where people would help him. And he lived. He came home, got married, had family, taught school for 20 years out in the California because someone gave him a scroungy old blanket, half a blanket, half a blanket. And when I talk to high schoolers, I talk about attitude. I talk about how 90% of your life, or 10% of your life, is what happens to you. And 90% of your life is what you do about what happens to you. Ken's amazing story stands as testament that even in the most horrendous of situations, there can be great love and kindness. And somehow, it seems the divine will reach out to us when we need it, if we just choose to recognize it.